Good morning. My name is Craig Lee. I'll be serving as your lector this morning. As able, would you please stand for our call to worship from Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Good morning, everyone. Our opening hymn this morning is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And so the hymn book is available online for printing or for viewing on your phone or tablet. And I do hope that uh, as we keep our masks on, we will join together in singing for all four vo verses of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Until it's season, 
something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity, in our death the resurrection at the last of victory, unrevealed. Until it's season, something God alone can see. Let us pray. As we look at the heavens, the stars shine forth to herald your presence. The sun exudes the warmth of your love. The vastness reminds us we cannot escape from your presence. You are above and beyond us, yet you choose to dwell with us. In Christ, you promise you'll be with us through whatever befalls us. You will strengthen us in whatever needs we may have. As your voice goes out through all the earth and your words to the ends of the world, may our voices resound now as we give you all thanks and praise. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, I know it's my standard welcome, but it is true. Here we are, for those of us that are out on the lawn, it is great to see you bundled up and snuggled together, some of you. Uh, it is just a beautiful and glorious day for us to gather. And for those of you online, welcome. If this is your first time visiting, we are so glad you decided to be with us today. We do have a few announcements. Uh, for me, it's great to be back after a nice, uh, relaxing vacation. It's wonderful to go away, but as you all know, it's great to come home. So I'm so happy to be with you this morning. Gail will be on vacation this morning, our administrator. So if you uh, have anything that you're sending to the office but that needs uh, immediate attention, contact me or Reverend David this week. Uh, we are so grateful for the continual um, pursuit of the college Care pack Package Ministry, thank you, Laurel, for, for your hard work and your love and dedication to our college students. If you're on the lawn and, and you feel so um, moved, we invite you to contribute to the mailing. Um, you can drop some, some coins or some cash in the box over by the offering. And if you are at home and you would like to contribute, you can just send a little something into the office and we'll make sure it gets to Laurel. There are also some... Um, some cards that you can make. For those of you who are on the, on the lawn, you can grab some paper and you can just make a little note and send those, um, bring those back by next Sunday and Laura will include those. This is for all of our college students, um, those who have to be at home um, because of this pandemic or those that are away. So let's just show them a little bit of love and thank you so much for your support of this uh, fabulous ministry. I invite you to continue to be in prayer for our charge conference, which will take place on October 17th. Pray for the, uh, the council and for the pastor and for the leadership of the church. And just thank you to those who give of their time to work so hard. Um, this morning, Reverend David, as you may know, is not going to be leading us in worship. He is um, traveling with his son for a college recruitment weekend and we just wish Evan the best this day and uh, just some family time for them. And we are just so happy to welcome uh, Reverend Wayne Bauman. Uh, thanks for being with us, Wayne. We uh, look forward to your message and we thank you for being here. And we just will prepare our hearts for worship this day. I am so pleased to get to share with you about our children's time. Um, it is amazing that here we are in this new season, we are in October, welcome October, welcome fall, and our children are not able to be here in most cases. They are 
joining in at home, and they'd come on Zoom at 8.30 in the morning with Miss Donna and Miss Linda and I. And this month, in October, we are talking about integrity. And we all know that that can actually, there's just so many Bible stories. We can just open the Bible and pick one. Uh, it'll go great with today's message and, and where we're diving in today. But this morning, the kids were talking about Daniel in the lion's den. And it was a great, great message for the kids to hear. Um, I invite you to check that story out this, this week if you haven't read it recently. And read it through the vision and through the eye of doing the right thing when nobody is looking. And that is my challenge for all of us this week, for all of, all of us children of God, is to, to do what is right even when no one is looking if you'll pray with me. Heavenly Father, you have created us to be remarkable. Help us to live up to all that you have created us to be. When eyes are watching us, when eyes are not watching us, Lord, help us to be good and to be truthful in our words and our actions. Be with us this week. Guide us and allow us to just be reminded we are loved and made by you. Amen. My friends, it is my honor and privilege to transition into the time of offering for our church. We are blessed and honored to be able to give of, our, of all that God has given us. Um, and I just invite you to just take a minute and think about your offerings this week. Um, if it is that your monetary offering, there are several ways to give. If you're online or if you go to our website, there is a place where you can just click to give. If you're on the lawn, I invite you to uh, put your offering in the beautiful box over there. Uh, and you may also mail in to the church. But we all know that though our gifts of uh, money are needed and our ministries thrive with our gifts, it is also more than that. It is our gifts of, of time and talents. And I invite you, if you have not just just paused and, and um, taken time to think about all that God has given you and how you may give to others. We are so blessed in this church for our, our opening well team who gives and gives and gives and all of you behind the scenes who are making phone calls to one another and checking in. I just invite you now in this, mo in this time to think about how you will give of all that God has given you this week.
Thank you, Doug and Amanda. Let us assume a state of prayer, please. Your commandments, O oh God, are like the refiner's fire. They temper our judgment, melting down our resistance to your all-embracing will. They mold us into the people you would have us become. They reflect the brilliance of your pervasive compassion, casting shadows on our errant behavior when we stray from your path. You have taught us how we ought to behave. Your commandments revive us and set our hearts to rejoicing. They radiate the warmth of your love. In Christ, you have taught us the meaning of obedience. And through Christ, you have set us free to obey. Set a flame in us the prophet's passion for justice, so that the aim of your commandments may be fulfilled, life for all. In response to your great gifts of grace and life, and as an act of obedience to your commands, we give to you our tithes and offerings. Now receive us and these gifts we offer, and use it all for your glory, and to accomplish your will in us, and in the communities we serve. If you know our Lord's Prayer, please pray it with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. two readings of Exodus 20 verses 1 to 21, which is the Ten Commandments, uh, first from the New Living Translation and then repeated with the message. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with BibleGateway.com, I suggest you may want to become familiar with it so that you can follow along with us uh, in any translation of the Bible. Uh, a reading from the book of Exodus, New Living Translation. Then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them, 
but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land, in the, in the, land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's house. You must not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. When the people heard the thunder and the loud blast of the ram's horn, and when they saw the flashes of lightning and the smoke billowing from the mountain, they stood at a distance, trembling with fear. And they said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen, but don't let God speak directly to us or we will die. Don't be afraid, Moses answered them, for God has come in this way to test you and so that your fear of him will keep you from sinning. As the people stood in the distance, Moses approached the dark cloud where God was. The word of God. Now we will repeat the reading from the message. God spoke all these words. I am God, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a life of slavery, no other gods, only me. No carved gods of any size, shape, or form, or anything whatever, whether of things that fly or walk or swim. Don't bow, don't bow down to them and don't serve them because I am God, your God, and I am a most jealous God, punishing the children for any sins their parents pass on to them to the third and yes, even to the fourth generations of those who hate me. But I'm, swer I'm unswervingly loyal to the thousands who love me and keep my commandments. No using the name of God, your God, in curses or silly banter. God won't put up with the irreverent use of his name. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to God, your God. Don't do any work, not you, not your son, nor your daughter, nor your servant, nor your maid, nor your animals, not even the foreign guests visiting in your town. For in six days God made heaven, earth, and sea, and everything in them. He rested on the seventh day. Therefore God blessed the Sabbath day. He set it apart as a holy day. Honor your father and mother so that you'll live a long time in the land that God, your God, is giving you. No murder, no adultery, no stealing, no lies about your neighbor, no lusting after your neighbor's house or wife or servant or maid or ox or donkey. Don't set your heart on anything that is your neighbor's. All the people Experiencing the thunder and lightning, the trumpet blast, and the smoking mountain were afraid. They pulled back and stood at a distance. They said to Moses, You speak to us and we'll listen, but don't have God to speak to us or we will die. Moses spoke to the people. Don't be afraid. God has come to test you and instill a deep and reverent awe within you so that you won't sin. The people kept their distance while Moses approached the thick cloud where God was. The word of God. Thank you so much for that reading. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see your covered faces. <laughs> I am freezing. I don't know about you. I don't know if last year... Someone told you you'd be sitting out in the Arctic snow, worshiping God, that you would believe them, but here we are. This is 2020, and all things are possible with God. I'm Wayne Bauman. 
a friend of David Dean's. Uh, we met at Oakdale. Actually, I met him before we both worked at Oakdale together. Just to give you an introduction about me, uh, my old family and I, we served as missionaries in Papua New Guinea. So there, a cold day was 78 degrees, and you're putting your sweatshirts on. So it's a little different here. Um, we lived there from 96 to 2006, so we've come back to the States. We've adjusted. Uh, we lived with a tribe called the Oramba tribe. And in their culture, one person standing up talking is a sign to go to sleep. So if you all go to sleep, I'm good with that. I know how to keep talking while everybody's asleep. Um, but it, it, it's appropriate to discuss things. And when David talked to me about coming and sharing God's word with you this morning, he had mentioned that he had started the discovery process with you, where we look at the scripture together after it's been read. And it's not just me telling you, it's you interacting with the word of God and with me so that we see what God wants to say to us. Because he might speak something very differently to you than he does to me, and I may need to hear what he's telling you as much as you need to hear what I'm saying. So here we are. We're in the discovery process. Um, today I have entitled this Getting to Know God, and as the message says, God, your God. God, my God. I'm going to ask you to do something very difficult. And that is, I need to ask you to unlearn everything somebody has taught you about God. And we're going to look at the passage that was just read to us. And we're going to ask a couple questions about that passage. So this is going to be hard. If you're a new believer or a not yet believer, it's not going to be as hard to unlearn things about God. But if you've been a Christian for a while, I've been a Christian since... I was 18, um, and I've learned a lot of things, or I've been taught a lot of things about God. But I'm trying to see what God wants me to learn from this passage today, and that's what I'm hoping we will do, that we will share with each other what we learn about God from this passage today. Those of you online, we're including you in this. You're going to type in the chat for us, hopefully, and we're going to get some responses from you online so that we can hear from you as well. And I brought my pencil. I'm going to incorporate what you all tell me, so you're actually going to help us learn about God today. So we're going to get started with a review of last week. Somebody tell me the scripture, just the scripture passage from last week. Anybody remember? Come on. Genesis 6, great. Where do we start? Verse what? verse 9, and we ended in verse 22. Anybody remember who that's talking about? Noah. Noah. That's right. It is Noah. Great. That's where we started last week. Now, at the end of last week, David asks two questions every week. First question is, did you do what you said you would do? Somebody is listening. That's so good. So let me ask you, did you do what you said you would do? If you didn't, don't raise your hand. <laughs> but if you want to raise your hand, or online you type yes, or click the heart button, or the thumbs up button, okay? Did you do what you said you would do? And if you did and you want to share that with us as an encouragement, not so that we feel bad about ourselves, but so that we say, you know what? If you can do it, I can do it. Anybody here did what they said they would do? Anybody here want to share with us or type it online what you said you would do? You see this? This means I'm really cold. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of this this morning, unfortunately. I was in a nice warm chair. The sun had just started to come through, and now I'm standing in shade. So I am cold. I forgot to tell you I love to have fun. So if my joking is a little off-putting to you, please forgive me. That's part of who I am. I love to have fun. I love to have fun around the Word of God. So, all right. Hopefully some people online are sharing with us so we can hear what they did. So, did you share with someone? That's question two. I know I was supposed to ask you that, but I want to know. Did you share with someone last week? Anybody share with somebody last week? 
God loves animals. <laughs> okay. Why was that oh, okay. So you and the deans are good friends then. <laughs> Debbie's also a veterinarian. I am freezing. Sorry, people. One good thing that's going to benefit you, I am so cold, we're going to fly through this time together. <laughs> Somebody told me David stretched it out to 39 minutes. We're going to see what we can do to break his record. Not long, short. <laughs> so yes, if you're online and you want to type, yes, I did share, and you want to type who you shared with, you don't have to, but if you want to, again, it's an encouragement for the rest of us. And we're going to get into today's passage, which is Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 21. And as I said, today we're going to talk about getting to know God, your God, my God. But we have to forget all those things that we've been taught about God. Some of them may be accurate and true, but some of them may not be. And that's why I'm saying let's try to forget about them. We're going to focus on this passage. What we learn about God today is what we're learning from this passage and not from any place else in Scripture or anything else that's been taught to us. I'm going to pray one more time. Holy Spirit, we know that you indwell us. We know that you love us. We know that you promise to teach us all truth. And that's what we want today. We want the truth. We want to learn about our Father who is in heaven, the one who created us, the one who created this planet, the one who brought us outside into the glory of his creation today with a chance to worship him. And that's why we're here, to worship you, and learn about you, and love you as you have loved us. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. So, let me ask you a question. This is not one of the regular study questions. This is a question for you to get thinking. When you see a sign, and that sign says, wet paint, what's the first thing you think of? Shout it out. Do not touch. What else? Don't walk through it. What else? I hate the paint. <laughs> okay. Now, you guys are acting like a bunch of churchgoers. Nobody said you want to walk over there and touch that paint. That's the first thing that goes through my mind. Let me see. Is it really wet? Hmm. I guess it was. Now what am I going to do with this paint on my hand? <laughs> Why do they put up a wet paint sign? Give me some... For, come on. Okay. Somebody said to protect you. To protect the paint. But I think both of those things are accurate. Sometimes it is to protect you. You don't want to go walking through wet paint and slip right? At least I don't. I want to touch it, but I don't want to slip on it. But again, if you've just painted a park bench, you don't want that being ruined, and you don't want someone ruining their clothes. So signs at times are done to protect the item itself or to protect the people around it. And that's kind of where we're going with today's passage. God is putting up some signs. And with the passage that we just read in Exodus chapter 20, we're going to ask our first discovery question. Now, the discovery question today is, what does this passage teach us about God? So we're going to take one minute, and we're going to come up with some answers to that question. You can review what's already been read to you. Um, if you have it in front of you, you can look over it again. And I want to give you a minute. Go ahead and think through what does this passage teach us about God? Only from what's in the passage, though. Okay? So go ahead.
Okay, so who's got some answers for me? What does this passage teach us about God? Can you yell it? Treat with respect. Thank you. Somebody else? Okay, how we worship one God are the first four. The last six are how we live with one another. another. Okay, great. Somebody else? I'm sorry, yell as loud as you can, and I won't tell anybody if you take your mask off. Nobody else can see you but me. He's strict. He's strict. Thank you. Okay, he's jealous. He's loyal. Great. What are some of our online friends saying? He cares whether we sin or not. He cares whether we sin or not. I love this. What else? Anybody else? I think that's pretty good. I think that's a pretty good response from what it says in the scripture. Now, I had longer than a minute to look at this. So it's like I was cheating when I prepared my answer. So forgive me. (laughs) But some of the things that I saw was he's personal, right? He says, I am God, you're God. He's telling you, he's your God. He's a rescuer. He is jealous. Um, One of the things that I saw that has always been a problem for me, he desires our rest and our well-being. But for me, that like Sabbath thing has always felt like a burden. It's like, you can't, you can't. And I don't think that's what he meant, but that boy is sure the way I've taken it. I think he is particular. Um, He reveals himself to people. I saw that in several verses. Verse 2, verse 5, verse 7, verse 11. But when I say he's particular, I mean, he lays things out like that he's strict. Okay, no murder, no other gods, no adultery, no stealing, no lies, no lusting. And then the one thing that really spoke to me was at the very end, verse 18, the people were shaking in their boots because they said, "Uh, Moses, you go talk to him and then talk to us. We don't want to hear from him because we're going to die. So he is a fear-filling, I wrote this out, and awe-inspiring God. I think if he came down in our presence, we would all be face down on the ground, no questions asked. But I don't see it as a bad thing. This is one of my favorite descriptions of God. Maybe you've heard of this person, maybe not. Uh, One of my favorite authors is C.S. Lewis. He wrote the book, The The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It was part of the Narnia Chronicles. He's written many books. Uh, He passed away in 1963. And in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, um, there's this discussion between three of the children and the beaver family. And it goes like this. Who is Aslan? Susan asked. Aslan, said Mr. Beaver. Why don't you know? He's the king. It's he, not you, who will save Mr. Tumnus. Is he, is he a man? asked Lucy. Aslan a man, said Mr. Beaver sternly. Certainly not. I tell you, he's the king of the wood, the son of the great emperor beyond the sea. Don't you know who is the king of beasts? Aslan is a lion. The lion, the great lion. Oh, said Susan, I thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous meeting a lion. And that you will, dearie, make no mistake, said Mrs. Beaver. If there's anyone who can appear before Aslan without their knees knocking, they're either braver than most or else they're just silly. 
that then he isn't safe said lucy safe said mr beaver don't you hear what mr beaver is telling you who said anything about safe of course he isn't safe but he's good he's the king i tell you peter says i'm longing to see him even if i do feel frightened when it comes to that point that is god your god my god he is an awe-inspiring fear filling good beyond good beyond good god the last 10 years of my life over and over and over again god has shown himself to be good and loving but by no means safe i had created a safe controllable god who would do what i want when i wanted him to in my own mind and that's why i said you have to unlearn everything that you've been taught about god and let the holy spirit teach each of us who the god of the bible really is so thanks for sharing your questions i've written some of your answers down now we're going to go to question two question two says again we're going back to the scripture passage what does this passage teach us about people? So if you have an app on your phone or if you have your Bible with us, with you today, or at home if you have it, we want to know what it teaches us about people. We're going to take one minute, and again, I'm going to ask you to share your answers with me so I can write these down and include them as part of the message. All right, we are back again. Um, so tell me, what do you learn about people from this passage? They need structure. They need structure. Okay, great. What else? Yep. Okay, I like that. Expected to be good, kind, and decent. But we make mistakes. I'm in the mistake club. I just want you to know. That. <laughs> what else? Go ahead. Somebody got something? They'd rather have an intermediary. Yes. Interesting. What are the online folks telling us? People will sometimes follow their own desires, even if they break the rules. Okay. Sometimes follow their own desires, even if they break the rules. Yes, sir. Fearful of the unknown. That is so true. Good answer. Anybody else? I don't want to twist your arm, but if you have something you want to say, I want to hear it. All right. Again, I had a little bit more than a minute when I was working on this message. So some of the things I got, some of them are good, some of them are not good. People can enslave other people, right? He said, I am the God who brought you out of Egypt where you were slaves. 
But people can worship. They can worship many gods or they can worship the true God. They can love God or they can hate God. They can choose to obey his commandments or they can choose to reject his commandments. And then a lot of the things that are listed there, I think he listed them because he realizes we're capable of fear, of adultery, of murder, of lust. But one of the things dealing with the intermediary, um, we can be afraid of God. And that can cause us to pull back from a relationship with him. We have that ability as well. So, what I would like to do is kind of wrap this up a little bit, just reminding us of what we said about God and about people, and then we'll move into the application questions, if that's all right. Um, Do you ever see the preacher pull his watch off and put it down on the desk, and people say, what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. I promise you it doesn't mean absolutely nothing because I'm cold too. <laughs> so, but I do love God's word and I love interacting with you around God's word. So what we learned about the self-revealing God from this passage um, is that he is a rescuer. He is jealous. He desires our well-being. Okay? This is the God who has chosen to reveal himself to us. Without that revelation, we would know nothing about him. Yes, the stars, the creation, reveal his power and his majesty, but they don't reveal his personality. They don't reveal who he is. That's all right, we won't talk about that section. (laughs) So this is the God who is telling the nation Israel, I am your God. This is who I am. This is how I want you to live with me. I want you to worship me and nobody else. I want to bless you. I want to bless your family for a thousand generations if you do what I tell you. But he's also a fear-filling and awe-inspiring God who will leave us shaking in our boots if we ever meet him face to face. And then what did we learn about people? Some of it was good, some of it was bad. People have the ability to love God and obey his commands. But people can draw back from God. They say, give us an intermediary rather than make us talk to God ourselves. People do need structure. The biggest thing about this pandemic for me was when I stopped working, it's like my life went into chaos. Now that we've started getting back in and things have had to get a semblance of normalcy, I found the routine to be very helpful. So we do need structure. We do make mistakes. We we, We choose to disobey at times. And we can also fear and pull back from a relationship. We can pull back from a relationship with God and with other people because of our fear. So what's coming up now, this is the most critical part. Because we do want to look at God's word. We want to understand it. We want to learn about God from it. We want to learn about ourselves and each other. But now we've got to apply it. Because if we just hear about it and don't do anything with it, James tells us we're like a person looking in a mirror and going away and forgetting everything we've seen. That the blessing comes when we put it into practice. And that's where we're going now. We're going to the put it into practice. And I think this is a, a what should you do. This is your what should you do and who should you share it with this week. This, this is a, we're not just here to hear about God. We're here to put into practice because even in the midst of these commands, he said, to those who obey me. That's what we want to do. We want to hear from God, say, God, in this minute, Tell me what I'm supposed to do and who I should share this with. So we're going to take a minute now and we're going to do that.
All right. So this is a time where you've met with God, hopefully, and he has told you something. He's told you what you need to do to put this into practice. And if you are willing, I'd like for you to share that with us. It doesn't have to be incredibly deep, and if it's very personal that you don't feel comfortable sharing it, I understand. I'm not going to push anybody. But if you are willing to encourage us, that would be great. Again, I've had a little longer than a minute to pray about this. And this is what God was showing me. I believe God says leaders need to go first. And so I'm going to go first and tell you what he said to me. For me, I think he's showing me verse 17. Verse 17 talks about not desiring your neighbor's whatever, fill in the blank, house, dog, car, wife, whatever, position in life. And growing up, we lived in a family where we were always waiting for our ship to come in. The ship never arrived. It was always down the road. So I've always had a problem with the blessings that I see with other people. And I've always felt like God has been neglecting me, that I'm less than everybody else. So this is what I think God is telling me, that my desire for what I see in other people's lives is making me discontent with what he's already given to me. And it's making me not trust him. Just like you all saw a couple weeks ago where the serpent tempted Eve not to believe God was good. I have been tempted, but in another way. It's because I'm looking what everybody else has and not looking at the blessings God is giving me. So now I'm confessing this to you all because I know that in confession, bringing it into the light breaks the power of the enemy. So I want to be free from desiring what other people have. God hasn't chosen that for me, and I need to say, God, you are good, and I believe you're good, and because you're good, you're giving me what is good for me. So I'm confessing that to you today, and what I'm praying that as I gain freedom from that, that my trust and love for God will increase. That's what he's showing me. And again, if you don't feel comfortable sharing it, if the people in chat want to share it, they can share it, but if they don't feel comfortable, that's fine. Did anybody share anything, Wendy? Go ahead. And then I responded from a friend of mine who said certain mental illnesses such as alcoholism go to three to four generations. And Jesus then said, no, your parents didn't sin. You just three three under that. That's what we're saying. Okay. So the discussion is sin to the third and fourth generation. And then Jesus about... Um, alcoholism can be transferred down to the third and fourth generation and then Jesus talking about the parents didn't sin for this blind man and here's one of the things that I think is a tremendous blessing in that verse that I haven't seen before I mean literally I saw it this past week for the first time God says that those things will be transferred to the third and fourth generation of those who hate him we as followers of God have the privilege of breaking that generational sin. Okay, so whether it's alcoholism or pornography or shopping or whatever it is, the addiction that controls us, we have the blessing to break that for the generations that follow us. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take connecting with God and connecting with others in very real ways. But we have the blessing that we can break that and not pass that on. I see things in my life that I've passed on to my kids that I didn't realize I was passing on to my kids. But I'm seeing that, and I have to go to them, and I have to apologize. And it's not that God... It's God showing me that there's the potential for life and health and healing in the midst of all this. And believe it or not, none of that's written in there. That You didn't pay for that part. You got that part free, Okay. <laughs> But that's what God wants to do. 
He's showing the Israelites the same thing he's showing us. I'm not the God you've always been told I was, or I'm not the God of your own understanding. This is who I am, and this is where you're going to meet me, is in my word. Um, again, I'm off script. doesn't matter what I wrote because <laughs> it's not here. It's, this is just coming out of my brain. So if I say something that you say, hey, man, he went way off scripture, I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to just be real and authentic interacting with this passage of scripture. I think that's what God would have us to do today. I had a whole closing that I was preparing to do. Um, Let me just do it like this. If you're here today, you've never met this God, the God of the Bible. He wants you to be his son, to be his daughter. If you're online, you've never met the God of the Bible. He wants you to be his son or to be his daughter. Contact somebody from Glen Elk Church, okay? I'm not going to give you David's phone number right now, but contact Glen Elk Church. They will introduce you to Jesus and his saving grace. If you've been traveling with David these last few weeks that he's been here at Glen Elk, you have the power to bring this kind of discovery discussion to your friends, to co-workers, to your own family. And let them meet the real God of the Bible. Now, David can get mad at me for this, but I'm telling you, I'm giving you all permission. Call David up. Say, I want to be discipled in the discovery method. And if he never invites me to speak again, you all have done your job well. Thank you so much, Pastor Wayne. Great to have you here today. It's time for another hymn. And so as able, I will ask you to stand and let us join together in singing, <clears throat> Standing on the Promises. Oh. Uh, we'll be singing four verses of Standing on the Promises as soon as the keyboard starts behaving. Stop. 
Thank you so much, Wayne, for being here, and thank you for just being so real and reminding us that that is what God is calling us to do. Thank you also for braving the cold. I love this weather. <laughs> uh, a special reminder for all of you on the lawn and all of you at home, next week we will share a time of Holy Communion together, so just a little something for you to look forward to this week. I know our time of Worship this day comes to an end. Our work just begins. I just invite us to go out into the world and to be all that God is calling us to be and to just explore all that he is asking of us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.